Hello everybody. So today's session we are going to learn to determine the pharmacokinetic parameters from urine samples. So far in the three derivations what we have learned for IV bolus infusion and extravascular one compartment method was determination of pharmacokinetic methods parameters by using the plasma samples other than plasma samples we can also determine this kinetic parameters by using our urine samples so after collection of the urine there are certain criteria you can collect the urine analyze for the drug content and in the same way you can plot the graph and you can determine the pharmacokinetic parameters so this session we are discussing two things first thing is what are the various criteria for determination of kinetic parameters from urine sample and there are two main methods for determination of kinetic parameters first one is the rate of excretion method and the second one is the sigma minus method so this class will discuss the rate of excretion method also for determination of kinetic parameters so first what are the criteria for urine collection because a person after administering a medicine let it be a injection or an infusion or an oral administration or any other extravascular rules of administration the drug that reaches into the body has the only way the main way for excretion is by renal excretion or the urinary excretion apart from this we have non renal routes of excretion also but majority of drugs majorly excretes by urine through urine so urine excretion can also be utilized for determination of the kinetic parameters thus for the collection of the urine we need to follow certain parameters because combined with the blood urine is an excretory product and it is forming and it is collecting in our bladder thus it requires certain criteria the first criteria for the urine collection is the drug what you have administered must be excreted through urine minimum 10% of the unchanged drug that means 10% of unchanged drug must be excreted through urine as you know urine contains may majorly the metabolites of the drug molecule all the lipophilic drugs are converted to the hydrophilic molecules and this hydrophilic metabolites are being excreted but it is not mandatory that only the metabolites will be excreted the active form of the drug also may be excreted out of the body through urine based upon the physiochemical properties of your drug molecule the point is whether it can filter through the glomerulus or whether it can be secreted by active processes if any of these two processes can happen any drug can be drug can be excreted in the unchanged form also in the urine but here the condition is minimum 10% of the drug must be excreted through urine in the unchanged form okay so that is the first condition for the drug molecule next how to collect the urine samples okay so before administration of the drug at all water loading must be done with a 400 ml of water okay initially this is to induce the diuresis okay so just for inducing the diuresis minimum 400 ml of water must be taken next condition is after overnight fasting okay after overnight fasting empty the bladder fully that means 
urinate the complete urine out of the body and this urine is collected as the blank sample which do not contain any of the drug so up to this two steps this happens before administration of the drug initially 400 ml of water must be taken then after an overnight fasting you have to um, urinate and you have to empty the bladder fully okay now the next step is administer the drug with 200 ml of water and you have to take water continuously for every one hour you have to take 200 ml of water continuously for a period of time the purpose of this to ensure the continuous urination of the diuresis which helps in excretion of the drug molecules okay next step is you have to start collecting the samples at a particular periodic intervals for while collecting the samples suppose you are administer the drug at 10 o'clock every one hour you have to take 200 ml of water 11 o'clock 12 o'clock 1 o'clock every one hour you have to collect them you have to take 200 ml of water suppose at 12 o'clock you want to collect the urine samples at 12 o'clock you have to empty the bladder fully why what is the necessity for this because for analyzing purpose you require only 1 ml or 2 ml of blood uh, sorry urine maximum but while collecting the urine you have to empty the bladder completely what is the reason for this logic suppose 10 o'clock you have administered the drug molecule from the moment of administration itself the drug started distributing the drug started excreting out of the body and excretion happens through urine and from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock we have not urinated but urine is forming we are not urinated out of our body kidneys kidney produces the urine urine is stored in the urinary bladder so what the drug is excreted from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock is being collected in our urinary bladder and only at 12 o'clock we are going to urinate and excrete the urine out of the body so the amount of drug amount of drug excreted from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock need to be determined to determine the amount of drug excreted we need to determine the volume of urine formed in this 2 hours because amount is equal to volume into concentration you know x is the amount x is equal to vd into c in case of plasma i am saying in case of plasma x is equal to vdc that is x is the amount of drug that is equal to volume into concentration the same way in the urinary excretion also the amount of drug excreted out of the body is equal to what is the volume of urine formed multiplied with the concentration of unchanged drug present in the urine at that particular time point okay so in order to calculate the amount of drug excreted through urine you must know what what is the volume of urine formed in this 2 hours so at any point of time when we collect the urine samples you have to empty the bladder completely measure the urine volume to calculate the amount of drug okay so that is a necessity for emptying the bladder then next point is frequent sampling is necessary at a frequent intervals the samples must be collected note down the exact time of urine collection and volume of urine collected you have already seen then collection minimum for seven half life that means if the half life of a drug is 2 hours minimum 7 half life that means the urine must be collected for minimum 14 hours if the half life of drug is of 10 hours the urine must be collected for 10 into 7 that means 70 hours the urine must be collected but the collection of urine sample 
the frequency of collection we can decide it is not necessary you have to collect the urine at every time point but whatever the urine you are collecting it whatever the uh, urine you are excreting that must be collected and that must be uh, analyzed next point individual collection should not exceed one half life that means if the half life is two hours within two hours minimum two uh, in two hours one time that sample uh, urine must be analyzed that means it should not be cross two hours it should not go beyond two hours to three hours to collect the urine so in a two hours uh, if the half life is two hours in the first two hours the sample must be collected once that means every two hours it should be collected so these are the various criteria for urine collection i'll repeat so minimum 10 percentage of drug must be excreted through urine for collection initially the water loading must be done with a 400 ml of water then empty the bladder completely and collect this urine as the blank sample fourth point is administer the drug with the 200 ml of water and drink 200 ml of water in every one hour interval then while collecting the urine samples empty the bladder completely then frequent sampling is necessary while collecting the sample note down the time of urine collection and exact volume of urine collected and collection minimum for seven half life and individual collection should not exceed one half life so these are the criteria that must be followed in order to determine the pharmacokinetic parameters using the urinary excretion methods i hope the criteria is clear for you now we will continue with the derivation for determining the urinary plus sorry urinary excretion uh, data analysis so we have two methods as i said earlier first one is the rate of excretion method second one is the sigma minus method first one is the rate of excretion method second one is the sigma minus method let us see what is rate of excretion method in rate of excretion method these are the variables what we are going to learn x u x represent the amount of drug x u represent the amount of drug excreted through urine x u is the amount of drug excreted through urine k e what is k e so ke is not a new term for us we have seen ke that is elimination rate constant but here you can listen k small e is written k small e which represents the rate of excretion it's not elimination it's excretion what is the difference elimination indicates what metabolism plus excretion whereas ke excretion represents that it's a removal of drug it's a total removal of drug from our body and as you know x is the amount and dx u by dt that is the fraction or the differential equation that is change in amount of drug through urine with respect to time so change in amount of drug excreted through urine with respect to time is indicated as dxu divided by dt okay now let us go to the first equation dxu by dt that is rate of excretion of drug through urine is equal to ke into x how this equation came because this is a first order process excretion first order process depends on concentration mainly excretion happens by glomerular filtration so filtration is a passive process passive process happens depends upon the concentration so this is a first order process so dxu by dt is equal to ke into x now what is x amount of drug right correctly but what is x what is the equation for x for a drug administered by iv bolus you remember what is the equation for a drug administered by iv bolus x equal to x0 e raised to minus ket okay now substitute the value of x as x0 into e raised to minus ket in the first equation you will get dx u by dt is equal to k small e into x0 e raised to minus ket 
take the logarithm you will get log dx u by dt is equal to log k e x 0 minus k e t divided by 2.303 log dx u by dt is equal to log ke x0 minus ke t divided by 2.303 so this is the equation by, for determination of pharmacokinetic kinetic parameters by urinary excretion method that is sick rate of excretion method so if you listen to this equation this equation is also resembles to a, an equation for the straight line y is equal to mx plus c now you plot a graph by taking log dx u by dt on the y axis and time on the x axis time on the x axis so you will get a straight line in the descending order so this is the graph that is log dx u by dt on the y axis time on x axis will get a straight line with a y intercept is equal to log ke x 0 and slope is equal to minus ke divided by 2.303 okay look into the previous equation y y resembles to log dx u by dt y is equal to mx mx resembles to minus ke t by 2.303 and c mx plus c c related to log ke x0 so the constant c y intercept that is equal to log k small e into x0 so from this equation or from this graph you can determine the two pharmacokinetic parameters what is that one is the rate of excretion that is k small e second one is the rate of elimination that is k capital e so you got the rate of excretion also you got the rate of elimination if you got the rate of elimination you can determine the t half clearance etc okay now one more thing you have to learn in this point is in case of the rate of excretion method while plotting the graph while plotting the graph as i said initially the example 10 o'clock you are administered the drug 12 o'clock you are suppose you every two hours interval you are collecting the sample so 10 o'clock administered 12 o'clock you have collected the first sample then after two hours two o'clock you have collected the second sample four o'clock you have collected the third sample let it be like this okay so in case of the rate of excretion method while plotting the graph log dx u by dt again is the time the time must be the midpoint of time that means 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock 10 o'clock that um, uh, started the urinary excretion urine start collected in the blood in the 10 o'clock 12 o'clock only you are excreted out the urine so the midpoint of time is what the midpoint of time is one hour so total difference is two hours the midpoint of time is one hour so here you have to collect them you have to note down the time point as what is equal to it must be one hour duration okay so while plotting the x-axis that that you have to uh, listen carefully that you have to note in your mind you have to take only the midpoint of time in the x-axis in the next method the case is different so this is especially in case of the rate of excretion method okay so hope this much is clear for you in the next session we'll see what is the sigma minus method okay thank you